Welcome back to the show. Uh, today we will be upgrading our home network. Uh, we will be upgrading our older Wi-Fi 5 router to the new one, which is Wi-Fi 7. Uh, there should be quite a lot of improvements on the performance. Uh, the reason why I'm doing the upgrade, sorry, we are doing the upgrade, is that the old network is getting to be somewhat unreliable. It hasn't been gotten any updates in a year, so I'm not sure about how safe it is at the moment, so that's the reason why we are updating. Good. Without further anything, ooh, wait, I remember, a word from our sponsor. And today we are sponsored by my wallet. Stop buying stupid shit. <laughs> All right. No, as I said, let's get to the unboxing park part. Uh, unboxing park sounds fun. <laughs> welcome to the unboxing park. Uh, this is the PE. 91,000 from TP-Link and it should be quite powerful. Uh, this is a mesh uh, device. So basically you can have multiple of these in your home and they will be connected to each other creating a wider network. We should be able to work with just one. Uh, small correction, you said 9100, it's 19,000. Yeah, good. <laughs> Boxes. Ooh, more boxes. Box in, oh, it's a box in a box. I like the, I like the packet. It's nice, fun. Mm -hmm. That's it. The device itself, and oh, box in a box in a box. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, quick installation guide and about one meter of Ethernet cable. Power cord. The AC brick. Yeah, that's it. Cook the cat. I like the one thing about the design that the rotors have gone over the years. This is more kind of a household friendly, it's not screaming rotor, so you can keep it somewhere else than behind the closet or something like that. Yeah, in plain sight. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I like it too. Uh, well, the I.O. side, that's quite simple. Uh, power, then there's the USB 3. Uh, Basically, you can hook something like an external hard drive to that and share it to network. That's kind of a standard. Or if your phone is close by, just charge your phone or something like that. Ah, cool. Uh, then, the, this is kind of a big upgrade when we go to the Ethernet ports. Our old one uh, only had one gigabyte Ethernet ports. Uh, this now has uh, two 10 gigabytes and two 2.5 gigabytes. Uh, however, I have to <laughs> no notice at this point that we don't have any other devices currently in use that have 10 gigabytes or even 2.5, but it's future ready. Uh, another, another good future ready thing about this is that... <clears throat> Let's break it! No, no. <laughs> there. There's the SFP port, so that means that this is ready for fiber connection. This is something new in rotors. This hasn't been around, this has been available only about one year these days. So uh, when you have a fiber connection, you can connect, connect it directly to this port. Mm. And that's another thing why I chosen this, because we should be getting our fiber connection maybe this year. Mm -hmm. So it's ready for that. Alright, uh, next up 
we will be starting the installation with the app. Uh, these days every manufacturer has their own app which you will need to be using to install anything. So I will switch to that and then we will do, do some speed testing, comparison to the old one and I will give you my comments on this after that. Hmm. I'm doing the installation on my iPad and first I need to enable the local network access to the app. Then I have to choose the correct model from this list. This one is the PE85. Okay, then it will tell me what the cables are needed, how to power on the modem, how to connect the cables, and then what lights to look for in the modem that should be blinking or stable online. Those are all good in my device at the moment. Then it's starting to look for the device. You should be in proximity of it. I would say the connection is based per firstly on Bluetooth, so at least within 10 meters. When the device is found, it will ask you to connect to the network. After the connection, you have to define in which room that is. This is more important if you have multiple devices. Now it will detect the internet connection. These are the default settings that I, my operator uses, so I don't need to change anything here. Then you have to name the network and of course set a password to it. After setting up the normal networks, this will also use the 6 GHz network, which is something that is coming new in Wi-Fi 7, so not all of devices at the moment support this. But it, like I said, it's a future proof. After that, it will ask you when did you run the updates. This is something that you should do because devices in this way will keep automatically updated over the internet. At the now it's taking a while and it is creating your wireless network. After the network is finished, it will ask you to join up the new created network with your device that you're using. Now it's testing the wireless connection to the new network from your device and it's done. And now it is checking the connection to the internet from the router. And now setup is basically done. This is the main screen of the app itself. Here you can change every, every setting that you need. The built-in speed test is, in my opinion, a little limited because it won't show what it's actually doing. It's just saying that it's connecting. But in the end, of course, it will tell you what are the results of the connection, how fast it is. We're using 5G network at the moment. So in our case, the internet connection is dependent on how many users are using the same antenna and what the day of time it is. So currently it's download speed about 500 megabytes with fiber connection that could be double and more stable. Here you can see the settings for the individual networks. The multi-link multi uh, operation is new in Wi-Fi 7. Basically this means that devices that support Wi-Fi 7 can use uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks at the same time. So they will transfer data on both networks. This is new that it hasn't been done on other things. This is quite important because when you're using 2.4 gigahertz, uh, it's slower, but the network is more wider. And when you're using 5G network, it's faster, but the connection won't go so far as in 2.4 gigahertz. Hertz. So combining best of the both worlds is something that the multi-link network is doing. So this is something you should set up. And in the future, there are more devices that will be supporting this. The multi-link network will be named with the MLO slogan. And if your device can find it, then it's future ready. There's also a smart home part in the Deco app. So basically you can connect things like Philips Hue or your Deco app. It also supports some of the TP-Link's own smart home devices, but not all. There's the list of the supported softwares and devices. It's also important to automatically update the firmware of the device. First time it noticed that there's a new firmware when I boot it up and connect it and it's downloading it automatically and installing it. Once the firmware is updated, it will automatically reboot and connect.
As you can see, it is also gathering information about which devices are connected to it. And by that, you can see that if there are some devices in network that shouldn't be, you can block their connection and remove them from the network. There is also a security scan for the network, which will look for uh, suspicious activities and things like that. And of course, there are uh, extra services that you can purchase with this. Basically, the web protection is an antivirus software running running on the web, and the intrusion prevention is same kind of a thing. You can also purchase a VPN service from the Deco app, and you can use the VPN as a protection for the network. The purchased VPN service will enable you to browse network securely. No one will be able to track what you are doing. But that's an always extra paid service. In parental controls, you can decreate timetable for different users and you move users to a different groups. You can create own profiles for children and for adults. You can filter what kind of a material they can access, what kind of a YouTube services are available for them and everything like that. You can choose multiple devices to a different groups. There's a possibility to create an own IoT network, which is quite useful. You can put your webcams and everything like that smart home to that network to keep it separated from the others. As you can see from the advanced settings that there are multiple different settings that you can fix and set up from here. So it's quite advanced in my opinion because usually the mesh devices haven't had that many options available, but this is quite good. You can do many, many wonderful things here. Okay, that's about it. Software is installed and everything is set up, so I will give you my comments after I've been using the device for a week now. Okay. So now we've been using this for one week and uh, as I predicted, we only need this one device, not two, two rotors as before. So the Wi-Fi 7 does carry the signal better, faster and stronger. The home network is more stable and um, download speeds are still basically the same, but that's due to the fact that we are still using our 5G connection and we are hoping to get the fiber connection later on. Well, hello there. Of course you can come on in. This is not for you though. Um, good. So going from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 5 7, the performance, the speed, the stability, that's really improving quite a lot. And the multi-link system, we currently have two phones that support it. So uh, we can see a huge difference on transfer speeds in, in the home network. So this is really the future proof. We're just waiting for our laptops and PCs to be upgraded to 557. So then we can get the best possible performance out of this. Good, that's all I have to say. I recommend going from 555 to 557 and stay tuned and see what we will be doing next. Bye bye guys.